She's the past president of the Florida Direct Marketing Association and has been active in the direct marketing industry in South Florida for many years, well, a few years. She's only like 27. <laughs> Serving as a member of the Florida Direct Marketing Association Board of Directors for the past 25 years. Dale has received many industry awards, including our own Golden Mouse Award, which she got for direct marketing from women in e-commerce. And she's also received an Up and Commerce Award in Entrepreneurship from Price Waterhouse and the South Florida Business Journal, as well as the Direct Marketing Association Golden Era. She was also awarded the prestigious FDMA Hall of Fame Award in 2010. She's a frequent lecturer on direct marketing and has spoken for the National Direct Marketing Association as well as the Florida Chapters, the Public Relations Society of America, the Small Business Administration, the Water Quality Association, as well as local colleges about direct marketing. Do you get a sense that maybe she's the woman to go to for direct marketing? Well, she's right here in this room for you. She's also one of, we said that, the Golden Mouse Award honorees. And you will be able to learn a little bit more about her group today as she speaks with you about taking it to the bank and how to integrate direct mail and internet marketing to dramatically boost your response <laughs> and your bottom line, which for most of us ladies is cash, right? So I want you to always put your health and hands together and help me to wear. welcome Dale Filney. Everybody. Now, I apologize for my voice. It's a bit of what we call heat exhaustion, and that's because I went to the heat game last night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let me tell you, it was one emotional roller coaster. So, anyway, everybody in this room markets, and marketing is life. Uh, do I need the mic, or can I just go without the mic? Without. Good? Okay. We're going to. Give you the mic because this way I can walk around and this way I can see what's up there. Marketing, there are so many parts of marketing and we might be women in e-commerce, but that's not the only thing that we're gonna do. Because part of marketing is, the, is having to use many different media to get to where you need to be. Now, I'm, I'm attached to the machine because there's no remote, so otherwise I'd be walking, so. Marketing. Marketing is not an event. It's a very carefully planned out program that takes into consideration your goals, your budget, your resources, and your brand. I wrote this quote about 15 years ago. I use it every time I speak because it means something to me. Marketing is not something you just do once. You don't put an ad in a newspaper once. You don't do a mailing once. You have to always remember that it's continuity. To get your name across, you have to do more than one thing. So what's in your marketing toolbox? That's what we'll talk about today. Let's frame the conversation because everybody loves statistics. A couple quick quotes and numbers just to start with. 64% of adults say they like getting things in the mail. The USPS says that. 76% of adults say they made an online purchase as a result of getting something in the mail. 76% of small businesses agree that the ideal marketing mix is multi-channel. But only 54% of small businesses are actually using multi-channel. So let's talk about that. And let's talk about what it means in terms of the different types of marketing that each of us has to do to promote our businesses. Now, I call it, and I'm going to divide this little talk into prospecting and nurturing. And I have a little dollar bills because that's what we kept talking about is what we really want is a little cash on our bottom line. But different cash. media <laughs> comes into play for different kinds of markets. Now, we all know that prospecting, there are so many statistics out there. And there are different things that people say, and one of them is it's going to take 10 times as much money for you to get a new customer as to keep an old one. There are reasons for that, and part of your job in your marketing mix 
is to be able to combine the more expensive media with the less expensive media. Okay, we know that there are some things that cost you more to do and some things that cost you less to do. Let's face it, guys, you have to prospect. It's a fact of life. You have absolutely no choice. Okay, if you don't market, you die because that's what happens to some of your clients. It's attrition. They go away, they move away. In a couple of people's cases here who deal with the older pockets, they do die. So we always have to market. We have no choice. And your job is to get your message into the right people's hands at the right time. Now, direct mail rocks. When it comes to prospecting for new customers, direct mail is terrific. For those of you who hear, oh, direct mail is dead, oh, direct mail is old stuff, baloney. Right now, direct mail is in the middle of a resurgence. Now, let's take a picture. Okay, what was in your email box this morning when you got to work? John. A lot of stuff, a lot of junk. What was in your mailbox? A lot less. Okay, remember a couple of years ago, there was a lot more stuff in the mailbox. Well, right now, there's a lot less, and it makes each piece more important. Now, the reason direct mail is hot, 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 and the reason it's the best prospect, the best medium for your prospect marketing, it's because the only thing that guarantees that it's going to get into your hands. Now, you look, I'm going to find another battery source. Okay, that's not good. Okay, you fix that. But anyway, you saw that picture of the lady by the mailbox? Okay, the, the picture I just had before, well, that's the mail moment. The USPS has this whole little thing, it's called the mail moment. You go to the mailbox, you look at your mail, you look at it. You're taking a couple of minutes out of your day, you're doing nothing else, you're looking at your mail. You're going to make a quick value decision if you want to look at it, you want to open it, okay, and that could be the product of the direct mail. But you are spending some time where you are doing nothing but looking at the mail. Now, as we get this all straightened out, part of the exciting part about direct mail is it allows you the opportunity to micro-target, to really fine-tune who your prospects are. It gives you the opportunity to slice and dice. It gives you the opportunity to say, okay, these are the people I want to reach, and the technology that is available in the marketplace gives you a way to select them. Yes, I sell mailing lists. I've been doing this. Okay, somebody was nice and said that I was doing this for 25 years. Okay, so it's 32 years. And you're right, I did start when I was 18. But in the list industry, you have the ability to really pinpoint targets. Now, when we were going around the room and doing self-introductions, I heard a couple of different things. And when I came in and I saw the little blue banks here, and I said, what is it that you do with the little blue bank and you sell insurance? Okay, now, if I'm in the insurance industry and I have these little blue banks, a long time ago, one of the best insurance marketers I ever heard said to me, you know what I used to do? I used to get a list of people who had new babies and I would take my bank and I would go to their door and I would hand deliver to the new parents a bank and introduce myself and say, this bank will help your child grow, provide them with money in the future. And you know what? Part of your job as a new parent is to make sure that that child will always be taken care of and you need life insurance. Okay? Again, it's marketing. It's being able to, again, slice and dice. Because in the world, there are lists of people with new babies. There are lists of people who are renting who are great first-time home buyers who might need a mortgage. There are a list of new businesses. Who is the accountant? You said you, were, you do things with new businesses. There are a list of new businesses. And as an accountant, there are a list of new homeowners. My God, when it's tax time, that's the hottest list out there. It's a list of everybody who just bought their home. They have to file taxes. Direct mail right now shows the highest possible response rate in luxury products. You get, who gets great cruise magazines in the mail? Great pictures. Doesn't it make you want to go on a cruise? You get that in the mail. 
or you get something from Lexus or Jaguar on really thick paper. You know, in the luxury market, direct mail is amazing for prospect marketing. <coughs> Ethnic offers, I just did, and I, the reason I'm sharing this with you is because you have to think. You know, when we talk about direct mail, we talk about response, everything has to match. Your list, your creative, your author, your timing. I just did a job for Valencia College in Orlando, Florida. It was a postcard that was done in Spanish. It was for kids to go into alternate school situations. They have a different kind of school pro uh, program. So we did a list. The mail piece was in Spanish. The picture on the mail piece was a Hispanic family. The offer was for Spanish language books, which you get if you sign up with this offer. They got, on their first mailing, 170 people called up to make a reservation for the open house for the school. 500 people showed up for the event. That's huge, guys. It did not cost them that much to do a mailing, but it was well targeted. It all matched. There are so many different ways that a business can prospect market. And when you're looking at getting driving people to your website, direct mail is amazing. Because you need to stand out from the crowd. You need to make sure it matches. Be creative. Now, here's a here's creative. I had Lois Geller is a very powerful direct marketer. She's in Hollywood, and when she had her Madison Avenue ad agency, she said, "I wanted to get a piece in the hands of the top ten businesses in Manhattan. I want them to know who I am." So she had hand-delivered, and again, this is direct marketing. She got a list of the top 10. She researched that list because, you know, in the world of lists, it's a list. Sometimes you got to double-check the list. you got to make sure that the right names are on the list. And she was spending a lot of money. She had potted plants that were four foot high delivered to these top 10 ad agencies with her information and her name and her just everything in it, and she called up the next day after they got it, and you know, they all took her phone call. She got her appointments. So it might have been pretty expensive to do it, but she only did it to 10 people, and she made business. <coughs> Continuity programs. Okay, I heard we have insurance. Anybody sell long-term care? Try birthday cards to people turning 50. Okay, because you know the price goes up after you're 50. Everybody knows the price for long-term care goes up after you're 50. Send them a birthday card. Okay, because when you're 50, you know, send them a birthday card when they're 49. And you can do it every month. You can send 20 out a month. It's a continuity program. Some people call it drip marketing. Um, there are so many creative things that you can do that don't cost a lot of money that can drive people to your business or drive people to your website. But again, this is prospecting. Multiple mailings. Remember when I talked about the, the post office moment when they look at the mail? You know, when you look at the mail, the truth of the matter is you're only looking at half of it at once. You're only looking at half. That's why multiple mailings are so important. And that's why in the direct marketing industry, we teach you to mail more than once to the same person. If you get a good response the first time, believe me, you'll get the same good response the second time because the prospects only read half of it at once. And it's just a statistic, it's just a fact. No to lukewarm offers. Okay, this is the year of the offer. I said that last year, but I mean it again for this year. You know, it used to be we used to get the mailings from a dentist in the mail and they would sell it and say, you know, if you come and you become a new patient into my office, we'll give you free bite wing x-rays. Well, you know, that really made me want to pick up the phone. <laughs> I really wanted those bite wing x-rays. But if the dentist sent me something and says, hey, you're new to the area, come visit my practice and I'll give you free teeth whitening, okay, then maybe you got an offer. So whatever you're doing, whatever you're marketing, the offer is key. 
you need to make sure that someone is going to pick up the phone and call you, type your number into you know, the, your website, and drive them to your website so maybe they'll sign up for you and they'll opt into something. Lukewarm offers are a waste of your time. You're wasting all your money on prospecting, regardless of what you're doing, whether it's direct mail, radio, whatever your newspaper ads. Come on, guys, you know what it costs to put money into the newspaper? Putting in a dumb offer because you think, well, we'll just do this. Don't, won't cost me much. Don't. Lukewarm offers are no good. Okay, another uh, example of a lukewarm offer. Um, let's think. When somebody comes to you, what do you do? You give them a free consultation? Okay. Huh? A pen set. A pen set. <laughs> now, that's a useful thing. But if you said to me, you know, come to my bank and I'll make sure you have no fees, I'll give you uh, the credit card of your choice. Uh, I'll give you free checks if you open up a checking. Now, that's an offer, okay? Give, you know, because I know it's going to cost me 40 bucks to print up checks, but you're going to give me free checks? All right, maybe I'll come to your bank. Give them an offer that they can't refuse, and this way you can make a friend for life. Now, I just talked about prospecting, and I told you that direct mail is your best bet for prospecting. Okay, that's what I told you, and it is. So, why not digital? Why not digital? So what's the truth about digital? Now, I get people call me every day of the week, they say, I want to buy an email list. All right, so I say, all right, well, you want to buy an email list. What are you going to do with the email list? What are you going to do with it? Well, I'm going to send them something. Okay, well, you know, there's an infrastructure issue with this, okay? How are you planning to send them something? Okay. Now, who here has heard of constant contact or vertical response? Up, oh, everybody. What's the rule with constant contact or vertical response? No, no that's right. No rented lists. There goes your prospect email. Now, you all know about that in this room, but the rest of America doesn't understand that. The rest of America also doesn't understand the difference in how email lists are compiled from the way direct mail lists are compiled. Direct mail lists are compiled from addresses going up. Email lists are compared, compiled from often stuff from somebody else's site, and it goes down. In other words, you put the address to the email address, where it isn't the other way around. We take the email address and append it to the mailing information. So that's why email is a miserable prospecting tool. You can't use rented lists. The rented lists that are out there, yeah, you can get them, but you're paying a lot of money. If you have to go to a company like me and say, I know you can't sell me the list because there's nothing I can do with it, but I would like you to do an email broadcast to people because I want to sell them water conditioning units. Well, guys, Email needs to have continuity just like everything else. You're going to be paying a thousand dollar minimum for somebody to start sending out your email broadcasting. If you thought direct mail was expensive, to really do a good job in prospect email marketing, you are looking at really big bucks. And then, as we said, so much stuff is in your email box. You have spam filters nowadays. It's not getting anywhere. So let's put email and digital out of your mind for prospecting, but let's move it along. Because when it comes to nurturing your customers, digital rocks, okay? Who are your customers? Now, we all know that we do 80% of our business, over 20% of our customers, and they're the ones we really want to nurture. Now, how do we nurture them? Because we want their repeat business. We want them to tell everybody about it. And this is where digital is so important because it helps us develop the relationship. We want everyone to opt in because once they're opted in, then we can use our constant contact and we can talk to them on a continuous basis. Once they've opted into us, they're part of, they're our friends. They become part of our e-family. They're going to hear from us, you know, 
maybe every six weeks. We're not going to bombard them every day because that's the easiest way to get rid of them um, or for them to get rid of us. But we are going, we want them to opt in. Now, how do people opt in? Remember I said you could use your direct mail to get somebody to come to your website? You want them to sign up. You want them to opt into you, to your business. You know, we talk about why social media is so wonderful because it helps with the dialogue, the conversation, the feeling of community. So you want people to opt in. Email is great for customer relationship management. It helps you with your branding because every time something else gets out there, it's not just your logo or the look and feel. It's the tone of your communication. It's what you say to people, how you say it, what kind of offer you're making. Everything has, like I said in direct mail, everything has to match. Even in digital, everything has to match because that's your foot you're putting forward to other people. Again, builds community, encourages dialogue. You that on time? Okay. She's giving me the thing yet. Fine, good. <laughs> okay, now, this is my handy dandy slide that shows how integrating, this is what we were, you know, got to build up to the integrated part. Integrating digital with postal gives you your highest response. Now, I'm going to look at it two different ways. We can use direct mail to drive people to digital. Now, here we go. You've got this handy dandy thing. Everybody knows what a QR code is. You know, I speak to a lot of groups and they have no idea what a QR code is. And you all know that you can download one for free from the internet and put it on your business card or put it on your material and people can find you with their mobile phone. Which also means you have to make sure that if they're going to your website that it is optimized for digital. For example, my website is not optimized for digital because it is this huge cataloging type of thing with like 1,200 pages. You can find all sorts of stuff, but it's not optimized for digital. So I send people to my Facebook page when I use a QR code on my business card. Again, part of the digital family. Do not overlook all of the different components of digital and how you can use your direct mail. You want people to see, whether it be direct mail, space advertising, newspaper ads, you want people to see that you have a Facebook page, that you have a Twitter site. You know, you look bigger when you have all those things, okay? And remember, a lot of us are solopreneurs in here. A lot of us are starting businesses. You always want to look bigger. So those things make you look big. The other way around, why do people combine all these different media into their marketing program? Remember how I wrote in the beginning, it's part of a whole program, you want to put it all together. Different medium cause different things. Your cost per acquisition, your return on investment. You know that a lot of the electronic media, the digital media costs less than it's going to cost you for direct mail and postage. So you want to maximize the two together. A lot of people use email or digital to let you know that a mail offer is coming. A lot of people, do you remember when we all used to go back to the dentist? You used to get a postcard from the dentist at the time of your cleaning. Yes. Now I get it on email, I get it on my phone, I get it all over the place. The same thing with my, you know, your annual, you know. <laughs> what did you still send postcards out or you, you, put, you send them an email? Postcards. You still do postcards. My doctor doesn't send postcards anymore. He sends me an email and he sends me a text to my mobile phone. And there are companies that have just sprung up that just work with medical practices to do that. Even, even the hair place, you know, even the hair place, I get like an email four and a half weeks after my color reminding me that I should have been there two days ago. So, again, there are so many things that you can do. That's all. That, that's really what I'm talking about here, is there's so many things. Digital as a companion. We know that digital will encourage, enhance your response, promote your brand. Again, 
bigger than yourselves. Heidi gave me the thing. Okay, last slide. Some of the things that the big boys are doing. Coach uses Facebook to tell fans that the lookbook was coming out. The lookbook cost them $8 to pop to print plus mail. They're warming up the audience. The Girl Scouts tweet when their branded magazine comes out. U.S. Air uses a direct mail piece with a pearl. Pearl, personalized URL. You know, you've seen it has your name on, you get a little mailing thing, you type this in, or you QR code it, and it's your personal page as a prospect. Another, Barclays uses a QR code to promote their mobile banking app. Everybody does it. Everybody tries to use as many medium as you can to put it all together to make the marketing campaign happen. So this is my very fuzzy picture, and I call it Idea Factory. And this is where we talk about questions and answers. So I'm right on time, right? Perfect. Yeah, it's really good. <laughs> Okay, question. Let's talk about what you do. You're doing Every Door Direct, okay? Every Door Direct is a program by the um, USPS that gives you an opportunity to reach everybody in a given market. For a pizza place, it is amazing. For like a dry cleaner, for somebody who wants to reach people in a little area, great tools, great product. Who else? Financial planning. What else can we do for financial planning? Reach new homeowners. Reach people who just came in from New York. They might need a, a closer relationship with somebody. Okay, who else do we have in here? Idea Factory. Who else? Who wants an idea? Okay, go ahead. Banking lady. Yes. Again, new homeowners, new businesses. Get them while they're hot because they're really important. Not only that, market to the ones who came in a year ago, because chances are a year ago they went to the bank next door and they didn't like being put on hold. So market to people who were a year ago. Who else wants an idea? Go ahead. I heard this elevator is correct. High-end customers, you look for the zip code and the census. No. Okay. Yeah. No. High, the question was, in high-end um, customers, you look for the zip code and the census. In the world of mail, it goes by the individual household. You can decide what your vision of affluency is by how much they pay for their home, what their income might be, how much their disposable dollars could be, what their net worth is. <coughs> Bless you, whether they drive a Mercedes. So there are so many ways to do it. But yeah, there's a lot of, a lot of specifics. Go to the website. I want to ask a question. I want to reach people who have gone through short sales three years ago and prior because they are the boomerang. They can buy homes now, but they don't know. There is no list of short sale because the term of is not available either through any of the credit organizations or through any of the companies that do mortgage lists, but you can get Harp 2.0, Fannie Mae's, Freddie Mac. You can buy lots of things of uh, people who might have taken a variable rate loan, for example. There are also lists of what they call enhanced first-time home buyers, people who've been modeled that they're going to buy a home in the next five months. So lots of stuff out there. Lots of stuff out there. Could you help with uh, have clients uh, add sometimes different lists? Um, medical professional, uh, office managers, if they want to target like um, medical buildings, could you help with that? Uh, in medical lists, there are lists that are available by license. Then, and so that's one kind of list where you're looking at professionals by the license, and then you could go with medical practices, and you typically will get the office manager's name on it. Yes. Go ahead. Uh, yes, meals delivered. Meals, meals delivered. delivered. Waistband. Okay, brand new list out there. People who are obese or overweight. Okay, that is a huge group for getting people who want meals healthy meals delivered. It's really good. We just I just did something for a hospital who wanted bariatric surgery, and they said 17 appointments. It's like really wow. But yeah, it's a new list out there. It's called the waistband model. It goes by BMI. Go. Well, I I love 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 direct mail. I love love do it all the time, and I test and measure like you know um, you know a, a heading or an offer constantly, constantly. But what I what I was going to say because I 
will send things to business owners, I will always write in blue pen and I'll make it look a little bit more personal to try to get past the gatekeeper, if you will, so that they can actually see the piece. Do you have any other recommendations? Yes. Okay. I can't wait. wait. Yes. Oh okay. my God. There's this thing out there and I found it. It's called Send Out Cards. And this girl in the gym told me, she says, do you ever send, send, out, send cards. out cards? You can send out cards. You can send out those great brownies. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, girl comes up to me, or one of my clients, a different a client comes up to me. She says, my client wants to mail something for people. Uh, I love the way she called it, seniors age 55 and up. Yeah, mm -hmm. give me a break. Okay, okay that means I'm like this. But okay. <laughs> and she says, a hearing aid offer. I said, you want to send a hear, you want to mail a hearing aid offer to 25,000 people who are 55. What are you crazy? I said, why don't you try to send out cards, buy a list of people who are turning 70, okay? And not only mail them the send out card, but mail them with the brownies. Okay. Now this cost a third, a third, a quarter of the price of, of her grand idea of mailing to 20,000 people, 55 and up, who really don't need hearing aids. But going to, a little more creatively, to somebody who's going to need it. So it looked like a birthday card. Now, if you're 70 years old and you get a birthday card in the mail, and you, you're opening it. You're absolutely opening it. You think it's the grandchildren sending you a birthday card. So the message got in the door, okay? And it had brownies. And I have to tell you, she had the best response. It was, it was amazing because she went, and not only did we pick a better, narrower, micro-targeted group, mm -hmm. but by going in and making it so personal, okay, and personalizing it that way, that's how you got the response. But you're 100% right. Personal, personal, personal. Have it so very creative, creative now. Yeah, it was great, but it worked, but it worked. That's, that's what the fun part is. I'm done, okay, bye. It's been really fun, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>